Hello, my friends. I'm Gene De La Sala, president of Audioholics. And I'm Hugo Rivera, vice president of marketing. Gene, how are you today? Hugo, every day we're doing videos for our, fran for our fans here. I'm doing great. Yeah, same here. Same here. We're all pumped up. We're ready to share some information. I tell you what, a lot of confusion mm -hmm. from especially those newcomers to the field here where they're asking these questions, you know, what's a monopole, what's a bipole, what's a dipole, which one's better? They have no clue. I know a lot of people that are bipolar, but I assume you don't want to talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> let's, let's stay on the subject of surround speakers, okay? Right. Because it is confusing. There's a lot of different options for surround sound, and you know, quite frankly, how do you know what to put? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So let's define each type of surround speaker there is. Mm -hmm. I think I, that's a good way to start. I think that's a good way to start, yes. Okay. So the first most basic surround speaker is called the monopole. Mm -hmm. That's where all the drivers are on one surface, all wired in phase, mm -hmm. like a bookshelf speaker like we have over here. Right. That's exactly. a typical channel that you use for your front channels, whatever. Mm -hmm. That's a monopole. A bipole typically has two sets of drivers on different baffles, usually if it's wall mounted, it's on it, they're on an angle, maybe mm -hmm. 30, 40 degree angle. And all the drivers in a bipole are in phase. Right. Okay. Which is kind of interesting because, you know, it's a little bit counterintuitive. You would think that would be out of phase because it's bipole, right? I know. I, I, I always have to kind of remind myself so I get it right. Right. But, you know, a, a bipole can also be like a tower, like Def Tech and, and, mm -hmm. um, has a bipole speaker where the drivers are in the front, the drivers are in the back. They're all in phase. Um, they could be used for front channels to expand the sound stage. And then we have our dipole speaker. Mm -hmm. Dipole, meaning they should die in mostly in terms of surround sound. Right, exactly. Um, dipole speakers typically have one or both drivers out of phase. Mm -hmm. It's like a bipole speaker, but it, it inverts the phase, inverts on, the the, phase. on the speakers. Mm -hmm. Now, the problem with that, with dipoles, is when you start doing things out of phase like that, you scatter the sound generally too much. Mm -hmm. And if you do the bass drivers out of phase, you kill efficiency. Mm. I mean, it just sucks power away. You don't get as much bass coupling. It's really not a good idea in this day and age to do a surround speaker as a dipole, especially at bass frequencies. It looks to be, it looks to me, Gene, like it was designed for a time where surround was not the case, you know? Well, yeah, back in the days when the dipole speaker came out, surround sound was not discrete. Mm -hmm. It was a monophonic source. Mm -hmm. So in order to trick the brain into feeling like you had more spaciousness and you had more separation in the surround field, they did a dipole speaker. Understood. But now in the advent of discrete surround sound, especially object-based or oriented uh, surround like DTSX and Dolby um, Atmos, mm -hmm. the more speakers you add, the more they become, the less, the less they, localized, the less become, localized right? each source becomes. Mm -hmm. So it just further uh, puts a nail in the coffin that you don't want to use a dipole for a surround. Now, Dolby won't come out and say this because Dolby <laughs> wants to be politically correct. You know, yeah. DTS doesn't say anything mm -hmm. about what they recommend with immersive surround sound, but it's generally not a good idea to use a dipole for, for object-based audio, especially mm -hmm. when you're trying to create a three-dimensional soundscape. Exactly. Okay. But as bad, let me just qualify, as bad as a dipole may sound for surround sound, it's still better than a, a gimmicky reflection speaker for Atmos. Absolutely. That's the fourth yeah. kind of surround speaker we have to cover now. <laughs> <laughs> we actually have to cover taking a speaker and firing up at the ceiling like you're playing billiards. Uh, especially if you stick it by the fish tank. Oh, you can put it anywhere you want. IP technology from Roswell. I mean, you have specific angles for your surround speakers, for your side channels, and your back channels. But if you have an Atmos reflection speaker, it's magical. Put it anywhere you want. Put it on screen. It doesn't matter, Gene, because you know what? The sound waves, they're going to search They'll for They'll follow you home. Yes. They're like the T-1000. They, <laughs> they, they acquire the object and they terminate. <laughs> but we digress. Yes. Let's okay. go back. Um, Let's go back. Let's go back to the surround speakers. You, you know, talking about the dipoles a little bit, Gene, is there any situation where the dipoles is actually a good a good solution. Well, I'll tell you this. I know um, some of the top science minds in the field, like Dr. Floyd Toole, for example, I don't want to speak for him, but in general, if you read his book, he's pretty down on dipoles mm -hmm. for the reasons we stated. But I will tell you this, a dipole as a main channel, um, like the open baffle speakers where the mid-range or the tweeters are open baffled to the back, 
they can sound really good. I mean, they're trying to create spaciousness that may not be in the recording itself. Mm -hmm. I've heard some, some, I guess you could call them dipole speakers, like from a company called NOLA mm -hmm. and at, at a trade show, and they had the whole back open for the mids, and it, it sounded awesome in, in the setup that they did. So I won't say that dipoles are always bad, but in general, in this day and age, when you're in discrete surround sound uh, for a side channel, I would recommend personally a bipole. I use bipoles. They give you broader coverage if you have multiple seats, mm -hmm. or you could use a monopole or multiple monopoles if you have a lot of seating areas. You could do that as well. I prefer a monopole for the surround back channel, definitely. I don't even use bipoles for that. I like that as a more focused sound. Right, right. But, um, and if you're going to do Atmos or you're going to do DTSX, I recommend ceiling mounted or height channels as mm -hmm. monopoles. I don't recommend this reflection gimmick crap. Yeah. I mean, I'm sorry to we, say it, guys, but that's what it is. We've said it many times. If you want sound coming from a specific location, put the sound source in that location. Yeah, it really shouldn't be that hard of a concept to grasp. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're not going to get into this again, but you, you get the drift. Physics are physics, okay? Yeah. So, you know, monopole again, typical forward firing drivers, great for front channels, great for surround speakers, um, but if you want a little bit more of a widened sweet spot but still have good focus and still have good timber matching for the rest of your channels, bipoles are a great option. Awesome. Dipoles, eh, I'll give you some wiggle room, but in general, I think we're the, 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 bi, the dipoles have seen their day. Okay. Well, you heard it here first. Uh, guys, hopefully that uh, settled the confusion a little bit. Mm -hmm. All right, let us know what you're using below. You know, what kind of speakers you have? How do you have them placed? You know, uh, we'd love to hear from you. Some feedback. And if you like this uh, video, click like below and also share it with your friends. I um, think this time we should end the video by saying stay surrounded. What do you think? Stay surrounded sounds good to me. Okay, well, guys, until next time, stay, stay surrounded. surrounded.